Let me first say that my voice isn't normally like this. I've had a virus and uh, I didn't have COVID, uh, but I coughed a lot in the last few days. So my vocal cords are like really messed up. So this isn't my normal voice. How can we make sure that the guest experience is awesome on every visit? How can we ensure that that happens every single time they come? So we're going to answer some of those questions on this series of videos. And it starts with our six steps of service. What are the six steps of service? Well, they are a series of steps in delivering service that we know when those six steps are delivered, we have a much greater chance of making the guest happy, of making them want to come back to our salons uh, in increasing the client retention, which is ultimately what we, what we want to do. We want to make sure that they love their experience and that they can't wait to come back, uh, that they love everything about their entire visit. So these videos are going to go over some of those steps. Now, they're going to be your own expression of those six steps, meaning you will find your own authentic way to deliver them because sometimes they're not always going to be sequential. It's not automated. It's not scripted. It will be scripted for you in your own words, how you deliver them. But you want to make sure that um, you ground yourself. You're very comfortable with get, ensuring that Every guest gets these uh, six steps within their hour long or two hour long visit. This series of videos is going to help you along with that. Um, we've been doing this for many years and we found through studies, many studies and interviewing thousands of guests that when they have these six steps, when they uh, you know, are genuinely greeted with an authentic, warm welcome, whether that's on the phone in their first phone call or the first person they meet from our organization, that there's a genuine warmth, kindness, and welcoming from everybody uh, that uh, sets the tone for a great visit. When they have an opportunity to express themselves, to share what they like and don't like about their hair, to share what they don't like about their last haircut or last color, uh, what they did like, what the look that they want to get, how they want to, um, the look that they want to achieve, when they have a chance to talk to you about that and they feel like you're, they're listened to and that they know the direction and they know the steps that it's going to take and how frequently they're going to have to come in and how to maintain their hair. And so we're going to go over all of these things uh, about the six steps in the series of videos, starting with the one today. What this is, is the foundation of the business aspect of making sure that um, we deliver what we promise. Ultimately, we want to have, you know, 100% guest retention. We want everyone to love us, everyone who walks in that door for their first visit or their 100th visit to, to love that visit so that they come back. So we measure retention. Retention is a measurement of, you know, did the guests come back? But oftentimes we can't tell what retention is going to be for 6 to 12 to 18 weeks. So if they come in today, we have to look out in the future and see if they actually came back. So we'll look 12 weeks out and see, did they come back and how many visits did they come back on? Now they may have pre-booked today or booked their next visit, but didn't come back for that visit. So we measure retention and we look at ultimately having, you know, as high as retention as possible, hundred percent, which usually that's not realistic because people visit, uh, people die, people move, you know, life happens. Um, so we have a target for that, but we can also project what the potential retention would be based on some of these other measures. And we'll talk about those in these videos as well. What you want to prepare yourself for, because I'm going to ask you some questions at the end of each segment is what is your takeaway from this segment? What value did you get? How can you use this in your everyday uh, salon life? I'm going to ask you to put some information down in the comments at the end of this little segment. So you want to be thinking about that as you're watching this next clip. All right, here we go. Enjoy. We're going to talk about what faith in members and how they're important to you and what you need to do to raise them or meet the goals of them. So the first, um, the first thing I want to talk about is how many of you have seen the report posted where there's just random numbers and your name is beside it? Okay, so that also goes to Slack. Is that printed? It is. Okay, there's two. These are the two that, that get printed. Um, I think it might actually be like this on the report. I think I put them back here, so if you're thinking of the report. 
Retail for guests. Excuse me. Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, now I can't say anything out of the way. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't have lipstick on. Okay. So the two numbers on the report are retail per guest. That's what this stands for. Does anybody want a pen if you want to take notes? Yeah. Okay, and you are gonna to have to do a little bit of math. So can you grab um, five pens from yes. up front? So RPG, retail per guest. The other one is pre-book. Those are what is on the report that you currently see. And I'll wait, that way you can hear too, since I volunteered you to get a ready pen. Okay, so, um, these are the two that are on that report. They're um, just measurements of how well you're doing in certain areas. So the six steps include what? What would, what would affect these? What six step would affect this one? Retail per guest. How many more products that you use on them? When do you do that? When do you talk about the products you're using? When you're using them. When you're using them at the shampoo bowl. That's throughout the whole service. This isn't just get to the front, do you want products? So retail per guest is saying how well you're educating your guests on the products you used from start to finish. Not just what you use, how you used it, how to put it in their hair. All those things are on your evaluations from experience day. They're, um, you know, they're asked those questions, aren't they? Because I think you brought it to my attention, like, I didn't even know that was on the survey that they're asked if I show them how to use the tools, if I show them how to use the product. So that is what that's measuring. This number measures how well you're doing that. It's like, did I get an A for the day? Okay, um, but don't focus on the number, focus on do I give them what they need when it comes to products? Does that make sense? Because if you're focused on, I gotta sell them something, when you get to the front, you're gonna go, hey, do you want any of these? It's almost like, no, why would I want any of those? And we do have the promotion like, um, Currently, it's the, I always say it wrong. Buy two, get one. Thank you. Um, if you lead with that, it's a sale. If you give the education and you go, oh, also, blah, 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 it's no longer a sale. It's like, oh, well, I really liked what she said about that. So now I'm getting a deal. Does that make sense? So don't lead with the deal because that's not always available. Lead with the education on the product, how to use it. If you don't know how to use it, if you don't know our product, then that's a whole other thing that I know we talked about doing before Hurricane Ian and we'll get into that, but you need to be using them enough to know what it does, how it works. Use it on yourself, whatever, okay? Um, so that's what this number is. It's generated by retail per guest. So you have some numbers in front of you and one says total product. So product and retail word is used interchangeably, okay? Um, your total product sales is divided by your total guests, okay? So if you sold $100, this is your total product, and you saw 10 guests, yes, it's 100 divided by 10, which means what's my retail per guest? So I want you to take a minute, look at your total number of product sales, which is the towards the bottom by your total number of guests, divide and write your number down next to wherever you're gonna put retail per guest. If you sold zero, you have a lot of work to do. I know some of you are like, I don't have to divide that. I already yeah. know the answer. Don't be embarrassed, that's where you are. That's your grade currently. It hasn't been a focus for you. Make it a focus because you've heard how to, yes or no. Okay, so if you've heard how to, now you have to put that in practice. If you really don't know how to, you need to start listening to the people at the top of your list in your salon. There's a reason they're there. Me, that list comes out and Rob the third probably hates me because if it's wrong, I'm like, excuse me, what's going on? He had, something was wrong with it. We had double names or something. And I go, I need you to fix that. I, don't, I need to know where I'm at this list. Um, but I want to be in the top shaded, the top 10. Do you notice that they're different on the report? I mean, if you haven't noticed that, if you look, the top 10 are like highlighted by the computer. I want my name up there on both sides. And if it's not up there, I'm mad at myself. And that's just my own personal. But 
with experience day, you guys are making it harder for me to get to the top, which I love. It's like good competition, but because products are half off or buy one, get one free, and we're working and we're guiding you on that. And it's a focus. You guys are making it more difficult for me to stay at the top 10. And I love that. So keep doing that because that's like my, oh no, she can't be higher than me. I got to get up there. Um, but that's where that number's coming from. So I want you to think about what you can be doing. What do you need to do more of? Do you talk about the products? That's what's driving this number, that sixth step, which is like three of them. It's in your clothes. It's in your what products are you currently using? How these are how that is from start to finish. There's not a point where products aren't a part of it. Does that make sense? And if they're not a part of your conversation at all, that's why when you get up to the front desk, even if you say what you're supposed to say, it's not going to work. They have no belief in what you're selling them. Does that make sense? What questions do you have about this number? How it's created? None? Why is, why is that important? Why do you think that's important? Why do you think it's worth that number? Well, it's motivation. I mean, if you haven't sold any, of course you want to sell some. You don't want to be the one at the bottom. Yeah. No, it's not about competition. I mean, that's good. Competition is good, but that's not why we. That's not why we look at this. Why, why do you think we? Why do you think that number matters from a guest perspective? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, is it for bonuses? What's that? Is it for bonuses? Well, that's Things for you guys. For right. That's yeah. for you guys. But why would the bonuses be more if that's more? I mean, that's sort of in the realm of it, but it's not. Why? Why that's important? What does it do for the guests if they get product? They want to come back. Okay, they'll want to come back. They're more invested, so that's one reason. What else does it do for the guests if they buy product? Not the, just the purchasing of the product. What does it do for them when they go home? All those other things are byproducts. You know, the, the list and where you fall on the list and the bonus and all that. There are byproducts of it, but there's fundamentally a reason why we look at that so critically and why that's so important. We know that if a guest can recreate your look at home with what you used, they think you did a better job. If they go home and can't do what you did, they think the haircut sucks or that the work that you did is not good because they could not recreate it. In order for them to recreate it, they've got to use the tools that you use, which is part of that, the product. They may have other products. You're not using those products right now. You're using what you're using here. The other part of that is, <clears throat> Our brand, our name is unique. They can't go to Amazon, Ulta, anywhere else to take that home. They are locked into us as a culture and as a brand. So every day they are looking at you in the shower. That's your representation of them. Aren't you happy you're in the shower with them, Claire? <laughs> so it's like uh, Starbucks doesn't sell caribou coffee, or they don't sell Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Starbucks sells Starbucks. We, that's our brand, our name. It's very rare that that is the brand of a salon, because usually most salons, people can buy everything. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is go right on Amazon and try to get the cheapest version of it and not buy it from there. So it locks them into our brand. We also know that 80%, we have an 80% greater chance of keeping that client when they buy a product. 80% Better chance of them coming back to us when they have because they've shown their trust in you. They take that home, they trust the whole process, they trust that you know it's right for them. Mm -hmm. And whether you know you're 20 and they're 80 and they've been to salons their whole life, you know more than they do. You're educating them on the process. So there's value in it, and the byproducts are all the other things. Yeah, we measure that and that matters. But we also know it's cheaper for us if somebody buys a product and your retail per guest is ten dollars retail per guest. We're not going to have to spend as much money on marketing to get new guests in your chair because you're keeping the ones you've already got. You're already keeping them in your chair. How do I know that? Because these numbers are higher. When retail per guest is higher, I know your retention is better. It's automatic. It's across the board. So that's the why. It's not to sell. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. It's educating people on how to achieve that look at home. Make sense? Okay. Thank you. Um, so this is your goal in red to have an average 
Okay, so I just did some random numbers that were easy for us to divide out loud. But um, your goal is $5 per guest. Who is meeting that goal currently? Anybody? And, and that should be really easy to do right away. Because if you tell, if you do 10 guests and you tell every one of those guests, every product that you're using, about every product that you're using, so you have 10 guests coming in next Monday for experience day. If you talk to each one of them about all the products you use, every addition here, the spray, or whatever other products you use here, and you share that with them, how to use it at home. How many of those 10 do you think would lead to at least one product? At least one. At least one? At least a third. At least a third. Right? Yeah, that's pretty much accurate. <laughs> Three out of 10, which would have you at 15, probably at $15 a guest. So at least a third. So if you had that conversation with it, all 10, at least 30% are going to do it just automatically, and you might have 50%. So we know that, so it's really easy to accomplish, it's just a matter of, so when the number's not there, we know why, it's just because the conversation's not being had, it's not because you're not a good salesperson, it has nothing to do with your sales ability. No, because the front desk will close it out for you. The front desk will do the sale part, that's their job, that's, you need to present it, but they're gonna do the close, the hard close that you might not be comfortable doing. You can rely on them to do that. They're training and trained to do that. But you have to, you know, show them all the fancy things of the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever it is that they need. Not, um, it's down to a lot of you just, I see this, and, and this is, we're all guilty of it. Take the product out, put it in your hand, put the product back. Well, that's just some special potion that you have up there that doesn't matter to me because that's your special potion. Put it in, show much how much you're using for their hair. They don't even know, and I'm gonna tell you, I learned this from my mom, a lot of people don't know, and they put it on the top of their head because they don't realize that they should comb it all the way through or maybe start at the ends and work it up. Talk about those things. Because then they're like, oh, your product must be great because you're telling me how to use it. There's tutorials out there everywhere. Be their tutorial right there, their YouTube, right in that moment. And then they'll come back to you instead of looking at YouTube to do it themselves. Make sense? So, um, so really important, this starts at every step of the six steps. There's a part of it. Shampoo and conditioner, what you're using. Okay, this is what I'm using, this is why. Let them relax. I'm getting ready to detangle their hair. This is what I'm using. This is every time it goes in. This is what I'm using. This is why. This is how. Done. If you just practice those three things, you're going to be moving in the right direction of educating every single guest. Make sense? Okay. So $5 is the goal for this. And just um, for a national average, um, the average is 10% is the desire. This isn't, um, for you, it's very realistic and very easy. And the reason that is is because we want retention, which leads me to this. PRB, what's that mean? Okay, what are your three takeaways from that last segment? You've just now spent 15 minutes or seven and a half minutes if you watched it at 2x speed. What value did you get? What can you use in your everyday salon life? Write your answers down in the comments. Takeaways, three of them. I'm waiting. Are you writing? Okay, good job.